Welcome back. This week we're going to make Groot from the Avengers. It is an actual planter made from wood. Let's get into it. So if you're in the 3D printing community, I'm guessing you've probably seen a project pretty similar to this. In fact, this, that Groot wooden planter is really popular to print out. So what I did is I actually downloaded the file. I dropped it into Fusion 360. I do not have a 3D printer, so I'm not gonna be printing this out. In fact, we are gonna be going into the backyard and instead of using filament, we're gonna be using something that's a little bit different, but I actually have a good supply of it. That is those cedar logs from a tree that fell down into our backyard. This is the wood pile that we have in the back of the house. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for a piece that is going to be big enough for what we're thinking. I have never carved anything before, so this should be interesting. This is cedar, but I have heard cedar works pretty well, especially if this thing is going to live outdoors, which is the plan. So let's see. All right, so we're gonna try to take all this fork off. So now that we've got the bark off of this thing, we're gonna go and do some general layout lines for this guy. What I'm really trying to do is lay out where the eyes are, where the nose would be if Groot had a nose, and where the mouth is. So this is taking way too long. Let's start to speed this up. After a lot to work with the hatchet, we got this thing mostly roughed out the shape. Now the next step is I'm gonna take this into the shop and start refining this shape, working on the details and figuring out a way to actually carve a bowl in the top so that we can put a planter inside of it. Now what we're gonna do is go and do some more detail work. I am gonna speed this up. This is a basically a chainsaw attachment, carving attachment. I got this at Harbor Freight for like $25. So what we're doing right now is carving out some initial lines for the top where the planter is gonna go. And then I'm gonna define more of the shape so we can get some fine detail carving with the Dremel here in a few minutes. So a quick disclaimer as we're starting to power carve with this guy, a couple folks have mentioned as I've been posting this online that you can actually move this guard. So a good thing to do is actually to rotate it so that when you're holding it like this, even if for whatever reason it's gonna, if it kicks this way, that's gonna be between your finger and the blade. Even though it's gonna kick back usually this way, cause it's spinning in this direction, there's a chance I could get my finger stuck like that. So there's a little switch on almost all of these guys, just rotate it and make sure the guard is protecting your hands in the best possible way. So word of warning, just be super careful with this, but this does the job. You just gotta be really careful when you're using it. We've got a pretty good bowl going on. And now it's time to actually work on the face. So for the carving process, I'm gonna be using a Dremel tool that has a couple different attachments. I'm using this, this is basically just a round drum sandpaper. And then I am using this guy, which is actually pretty good to get a good bit of detail down into the carving. And then old school, I'm still using some chisels uh, to be able to hog out some material and get a really good clean line. And I'm just taking my time, taking off more and more and more material until we finally get towards a shape that I think is going to work really well. So now that we've got the thing pretty much carved out, I wanted to add some contrast to the carving. The big thing is I need to paint the eyes black 
and then add in black to some of the areas, hopefully to make everything else pop on the carving. I thought about using paint, but I thought it'd be way more fun if I use fire. So this is a technique called shu sugiban. I think that's how you say it. Basically all you're gonna do is char the outside. A lot of people will do this, especially on outdoor fences, uh, because it makes the things pretty much waterproof and it lasts forever. Here's actually a really cool picture of an example of that. But in my case, I wanna use this almost as a painting technique. So I want to burn it and then sand it back off um, to be able to add in that texture. Uh, some people will do this with hot sand where you'll get this really cool gradients. Wormwood Woodworking, who are really fun to watch, they do some pretty cool stuff with that as well. So it's gonna look something like this. Then I can come back with a wire brush or a Dremel or some sandpaper and get the general look that I am looking for. So you can see as I am doing this on Groot, I do this in a bunch of different stages, kind of get an idea of how it's gonna work. I eventually wind up having to really burn it in and then gradually pull it back off, especially get into the cracks of the eyes and underneath the mouth to get everything that I am looking for. And then once I get to the eye, what I am doing is sanding off the under part of the eye just to give it a little bit of the reflection you get inside of the eye and then taking a little bit of like the white speck that you would get in an eye with reflection from the sun, actually manually putting that in um, by just carving that out. Now that we've got the entire thing pretty much to the spot we want, I'm gonna be going back and I want to clear coat this. And so what I am going to do is spray it so I am just going to tape off lightly so I don't pull off any of the char around the eyes. So now that this is in the garden, we can either put a potted plant with the actual pot inside of it, right inside the top of the head, or we can put potting mix with some plants inside. This actually isn't the only cedar project I've done specifically for a garden. I did some planter boxes that don't look like something from the adventures, a little more traditional. So I'll see you guys there in just one second as we jump into that. And until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.